Guitar practice session 11424. These are fairly sloppy practice sessions where I practice whatever I think I need to be working on, then give you a recap so you get an idea of what you're getting into. This, of course, being that recap, hoping the practice sessions help to generate a routine, verbalize what I'm trying to learn, possibly provide information to others who are learning similar things, possibly also provide for feedback. If anybody sees a better way to do the types of things that I'm trying to do, I do think that presenting the information as though someone is listening is a good practice, even if no Nobody is because it helps us to verbalize things and structure things in a systematic way that we might not otherwise do because we're just like, oh, it's only me that I'm thinking about. Who cares what that guy thinks? But if someone else is thinking about it, then maybe I should organize what I'm talking about here. So if anybody else wants to make their own presentations, you could use these resources if you want. We'll try to provide them, such as the Excel worksheet, which is formatted from us perspective playing the guitar, so that if we took the guitar and we placed it on the worksheet strings first, low or heavy string on top, top to bottom, left to right, in the same format as us from behind the guitar. I'm going to flip my guitar around so it looks like I'm left-handed so that what I'm doing matches the same format as on the worksheet as closely as possible to what we're doing from the perspective of actually playing the guitar so we can spend our time not flipping the guitar around in circles in our mind, but focusing in on the different intervals that we're working on. So I start off by just kind of thinking about the next project, which is we're going to be working on the ninth here. So we're in the minor key, looking at the ninth interval, which is really adds a lot of flavor and color. The more that I kind of was working with it today, I, I realized that I don't use it as much as I should, at least not consciously. I kind of noodle around with it, but uh, it really is a, a nice interval, one that often people don't see as often because when we build the chord, we have the one, three, five, and then often the seventh gets the next most attention and we kind of lose the nine, 11, and 13. I talk about how these are a little bit more confusing due to the fact that we call them a nine, 11, and 13, even though there's only seven notes in a scale. Basically, we can think of these in essence as equivalent to the even notes that we skipped. And I talk about that. Uh, a little bit. And then uh, I go over to the overarching project to have that in mind, just to reiterate it in my mind. So we go over to the major key, just a quick recap. Of course, we want to be able to know the major scale. I want to be able to play chords from every note within the major scale, meaning at the least, I'd like to say, do I play a major or minor chord from it? How do I construct that? And then I would like to play all the other related modes so that I'm playing in the same key, but different modes within it. One way to do that is to have an absolute numbering system based on the major scale using it as in essence, our point of reference so that I would also like to be able to play not only the one, three, five, but the seven, nine, 11 and 13, which become difficult, not only because they're not part of the triad, but also because they don't follow the same convention of always being the same intervals for a major and minor if we're playing in the same key. So that's the next thing I would like to systematically learn. Uh, how do I know what the intervals are depending on if I'm playing the one or the four or the five for a major, for example, all major chords, but having a distinct interval on the four and the five if we're playing a related modal chord all the notes in the same key. And I don't have to play the related modal chord, so I talk a little bit about, you know, we could switch and play the D major and then to the E major, or we can play the note, same notes in the chord, which would be the, uh, the D mixolydian in this case, and I'm sorry, the D lydian and the E mixolydian. So we talk about that a little bit. And then, of course, we're focused on the minor. So then we want to learn the minors down here. We move on down to... Uh, the, the, the minor, uh, I'm on the wrong key, on the wrong tab. Uh, so we move on down to the minor. And then I talk about it. So we want to learn the related minor intervals, which we can compare to the major. We still have the one, four, five that are in the minor. And same systematic idea, learn the intervals for the minor and then look at the exception to the rule if I was playing like the related four and five, which is basically the related mode number two, Dorian, mode number three, Phrygian, what are the exceptions to the rules? And then that's the way we can kind of systematically get this down. That means as we're learning the ninth, the ninth will work 
for all uh, of the majors, actually, even though we're learning on the minor uh, because we're learning a mate. Well, we'll talk about that. And then and then we'll talk about which of the which of the minor modes it works with and which one it doesn't. So then we go back on over here and uh, we start to think about how if I had any note on the fretboard as my root, I want to find every possible available minor to it. We do that by selecting a note in the middle of the guitar. And then we look at the six possibilities because there's only six strings and only one note will fit the, the, the bill for each of those six strings. And then we can imagine we can move that on the fretboard. So that's how we can systematically kind of go about uh, that goal. So we do that for at least the top couple strings. I, I think we stop after like two strings. Uh, I'm only getting two strings at a time. I should be getting, but anyways, that's where that's where we go. I tell a joke in there sometime in America. We're in political season here with the elections and whatnot. So it's a political joke. If you want to skip that, you could skip it. It's a little bit long because I had all this material. I only got two days before the election, so I had to get I had to squeeze it in there. So it might be a little more raw than normal and not quite as refined and whatnot. But it's practice session, so if you want to skip it, you could skip it. Just uh, get, you know, it is what it is. I'm not a professional here, okay? I'm practicing, all right? That's my, that's my get out of jail card. So, so and, then, uh, and then at the end, I kind of noodle around practicing moving between different modes. So, right, so I want to think about if I'm in like the, the minor key. Uh, notice I move naturally. I usually practice in a blues structure going from the minor uh, like an A minor to the Dorian and the Phrygian, which yesterday I thought a little bit about what would be the difference if I go from A minor and then I go to like D minor versus D Phrygian, which is all parallel. So it'll sound good. That's kind of like what blues I think does more often. But, and then I can think about, well, what if I go to A minor and then I go to the D Dorian, which means there's, it's not exactly a D minor. It still has a minor chord, but it has one interval different. So it's gonna be different than like thinking of, of myself going to a completely different scale of D minor. I'm in the same scale, but with one different interval. And then I go to the Phrygian, and then I go to the, to the E Phrygian. And then I wanna think more about, well, what if I was going to from A to the Mixolydian? I can throw in again a G, that would be a, a G major now would fit into here, but when I'm in Mixolydian, what do I do in Mixolydian? Most of the time, I usually play like a blues shuffle pattern because it has that minor seven in it. So what would happen if I like went from Aeolian to the Mixolydian kind of shuffle pattern that really makes me feel like I'm switching keys from minor to Mixolydian and then back to minor? How harsh is that on the ear? How smooth can we make it? How long can I stay on Mixolydian before it sounds like I'm on Mixolydian as opposed to just playing something in the context of the minor, right? I should be able to pretty seamlessly go back and forth between G mixolydian and A minor. Same with the, C, and then I do the same with the C, which now that's the related major. So I'm gonna try to play like a shuffle pattern, bluesy shuffle pa pattern here, even though it's not mixolydian, therefore it doesn't have a minor seven in it, but I can still play like this normal kind of bluesy shuffle pattern with it and say, how long can I hang out on that shuffle pattern in the key of C? before my ear says, hey, I'm in the key of C rather than in the key of A, and then go back to the key of A minor, right? How, you know, th those are the things I'm kind of playing with a little bit on the practice session, or at least trying to. So that is that. Today we're continuing on with the minor scale, otherwise known as mode number six, the Aeolian mode, focusing in on the ninth of it, noting that the ninth is usually a little bit less well known than the three intervals used to create a chord, that being the one, three, five, and then the next well known interval is typically the seven. And then we have these three other intervals that we could add when constructing a chord or thinking of them in terms of the scale, which are confusing for multiple different reasons, including number one, the nine, 11, and 13 are not in the actual, they're not in the numbering system when we number the relative positions within a scale, whereas the one, the three, the five, and the seven are. And why is that? Well, if we think about the chord creation, remember what we're doing is we're basically just starting on any note we think of it more as a circle. I think it's easier to visualize these notes going around in a circle. And we just pick every other note 
to create, say, our triad. So there's no even notes within there. It's the one, three, five. One reason we might do that is because if you choose notes that are really close together, it gets kind of muddled up in the sound. So you have a little bit more distance in the sound in terms of the resonance of the sound when you pick every other note. So they ring out a little bit more distinctly. There's room for them to basically ring out, I think is the general idea of it. And then if we skip another one, we get to the seven and that ends our scale. So we've skipped every other note and we've gotten to the seven of it. So what is the nine? Well, that's just basically going around in a circle. If I skipped another note here and went to the second, it's equivalent to the second. Why don't we call it the second? I think technically, <clears throat> if we were thinking about like a piano and different octaves, we would be another octave up. But on the guitar, I'm just going to be thinking about it in terms of a circle. I'm not going to be thinking about different octaves. So I will just call it basically equivalent to a second interval. So I'm just going to be looking for all of the second intervals, which have a two note away in this case, major second, and say that's equivalent to the nine when I'm doing my, my chord creation. Or if I'm thinking in terms of the scale, in the terms of the scale, it would be a second, right? In terms of chord creation, you can call it a nine. And the same would be for the 11. That would be the four that's basically missing here. And then the 13 would be the six. I have hidden cells. So if you unhide these, selecting these and unhide on the worksheet, you can see all of the notes, one, two, three, four, five. So you can see on the first one here, where we have the scale listed this way, you have the same scale listed this way, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So it's the same thing. The chord creation down here, this is the Ionian mode. This is the Dorian mode, which is basically just taking the D starting from there and has the same notes, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, right, and so on. But when we do the chord creations, what we do is we typically skip every other note and then add the 9, 11, and 13 to continue with that pattern of skipping every other note. That's why I hide the 2, the second up top, because it's redundant, because that's the 9. I hide the 4, because that's redundant, because it's the 11, 11. And I hide the 6, because that's redundant. That is the uh, 13. So when I build my chords, I think of it as 9, 11, and 13, because that's what you're going to see when people write these chords, typically. But I want to equate them in my mind to find them as being the even intervals, the 2, the 4, and the 6. The other thing that's confusing about these intervals up top is that uh, when we do a chord creation, it's going to be like, okay, well, what if I say I add a 9? Does that mean I have to grab the 1, 3, 5, 7? and a nine, which means how in the world, I'm gonna have to do some barring or something to be able to do that because that's a lot of notes to be able to grab with one hand, right? So so remember that that's, you don't technically have to do that. Like I might drop the seven. So if I do that, technically, if I say I'm just gonna add a nine, then yeah, that's basically what it would be. It would be all these notes and then I'm gonna add a nine to it. But uh, in practice, of course, we can drop notes. And if I'm adding the nine, the first note I might drop would be either the seven, if I don't want that flavor of the seven, or the five. The five is kind of like the filler note. It's not adding a whole lot of emotion. So, so if you want the seven, you can drive the, drop the five, right? And then, if, and then the second note, if I drop the seven, if I can't do that, I drop the five, and then I drop uh, the three. So I'm just basically gonna be thinking of it as the one, three, five, our baseline chord. And then can I add the nine to that? And uh, if, I, if I can't, I'll drop the five first. And then if I can't drop the five, I'll drop the three. That's how we're basically going to be thinking of it. Now, as we do this, we're kind of getting in the weeds, looking to be able to find every possible ninth if I choose any note on the fretboard, which we can do by just picking the middle of the guitar again and just looking at each string. <clears throat> and my voice is going. And every, every ninth related to it, and there's only going to be six because there's six strings, and then all those shapes are movable in theory. But let's give a quick recap of our overarching project, just so I can reiterate that in my mind, so we have that in the back of our minds. So I'm going to go back on over to the related modes, remembering that we are basically want to be thinking of the major scale as our Rosetta Stone, even though it is simply the Ionian mode from this perspective. There's nothing really special about it, kind of like when we're trying to, again, learn space, all the different, you know, we learn it from the perspective of Earth because that's where we're at. But 
in, when, when we're just trying to measure distances and whatnot, there's nothing really special about at least that point in time from a measurement perspective, but it's useful because if we don't pick a point to measure from, we won't be able to measure anything, right? So that's similarly here, all these modes are kind of connected like a fractal picture, but we have to pick a point to measure from. The, the major scale is a useful place to do that from. We list the seven relative positions out of the 12 notes. These in the key of C is often a good practice point because it gives us a double check because there's no sharps and flats in that scale. Although I'm not trying to memorize the chords, I'm trying to memorize the shapes and the relative positions so I can move everything around. I want to be able to convert any of these relative positions into a chord, which means I usually start with the one, four, five, our major, the two, three, and six are minor, and therefore I, I now have all I need to make a song in the key of C and even other modes from the perspective of just kind of playing around the other modes as my center point. However, we would also like to be able to play making the other modes the one, seeing it from that angle. So if I went to the Phrygian and made it the one, how do I know now that these relative positions have now changed in terms of the notes, same notes, different relative position. Well, I could use the major scale as our point of reference, noting that if I'm in the Phrygian mode, it's what I would call the third mode, right? It's the third mode from the major scale. So if I name the Phrygian mode, mode number three, that helps me to link it to what I can memorize as the major scale and be able to convert it then to the Phrygian mode. How? Well, I can see there's there's two steps down from the Ionian. So if I'm on mode number three, three minus one is two, the number of steps to get down there. And then if I'm looking at like the third of the Phrygian, it would be three minus one is two plus three gives me five, meaning it would be the relative fifth position of the major scale. And I know the one, four, five has a major chord construction. Therefore, I would have a major chord here beyond that if I know that the fifth has an absolute number of the mixolydian, I know that I can add like a seventh to it, which has that minor seventh as opposed to the major seventh. So that's one thing I would like uh, to be able to do, play all the different modes and be able to convert the notes into chords within uh, the different modes. The mode that we're on now, of course, is the Aeolian mode, which is the minor scale, which often people think of as, again, kind of higher or different from modes. But if I think of it as a mode, then that's easier because I can just compare it and say, well, that's the sixth mode of the related Ionian, the major scale. And then I can compare the intervals of the minor scale to the major scale. So how do we do this? Uh, we're going to say, I want to learn all of the intervals that I can play in a chord in terms of the one, three, five, which I can memorize by just saying, this is the minor and the, and the major, the one, four, five, our major the in, in a major chord in the two three six minor uh, but then I would like to go to the seven nine eleven and thirteen how do I memorize those from a practical standpoint well if I'm in the the majors I can memorize all the intervals for the major uh, and see the distances of them as my default and then when I go to the four and the five remember my option as I go to the four to the five if I go to the F and the G I can play a triad and think of that triad as, as though I'm going to another major scale, like F major or G major, which means I'm going to play something parallel. Or I can think of myself being in the same key, which means I'm really going to Lydian, which has the same triad, but might have a different interval somewhere. We'll have one different interval from the major happens to be the 11. And I can go to uh, the Mixolydian, which is going to have one different interval, which happens to be the seven. So I want to be able to learn the major and then know the other modes, which have one different interval. And if I know that different interval, that gives me the option to either play something in F major parallel. It'll sound parallel or to play it in uh, like an F Lydian, which means all the notes are in the same key. So both will sound kind of cool, but there's going to be a different flavor to them. Uh, on both of those. And then we go to the minor. The minor we can compare to the major. It's going to have basically all the intervals for the major here are now going to be perfect the same. The majors will be converted to minors except for the second. 
which will still be a major second. And once I know these, then I can compare the minor modes to them, which is the Dorian and the Phrygian, which will once again only have one mode different or one interval different between the top intervals, really between the, the 9, 11, and 13. So that's where we are now. So if I go to the Aeolian, we go down to the Aeolian down here, the minor, and I put it on top. So now we just have the same notes, but we started A, A, B, C, D, E, F, uh, G, and so on. And now we have the, the starting on the Aeolian, which is the sixth of the related major. That's the absolute numbering system. And then the seven uh, related to the, and then the three is equivalent to the one. The four is equivalent to the two of the major. The, the five is equivalent to the third, uh, what I would call mode. And then the six is equivalent to the fourth mode Lydian, and the seventh is equivalent to the fifth mode mixed Lydian. Now, to memorize how to create chords when we think about the minor scale, we could start in a similar fashion saying the one, four, five, the blues progression, the one, four, five will all be minor. That's useful because it's completely parallel to what's on the major, where the one, four, fives are major, one, four, fives of the minor are minor. But on the major, the two, three, and six. Are, were the minors when I'm on the minor scale it's not the two three and six it's now the three six and seven which are going to be the majors so that's great I can kind of memorize that and that will allow me to build triad chords but again what I'd like to do beyond that is to say w what are the actual modes related to each of them because the modes will help me to play again these other intervals or have the option to play them so now I'm so I'm going to learn all of the intervals for the minor, which has a perfect first, same as the major. It has a, a the second is a two note away major second, which is actually the same as the major. That's the weird one. And then the third is a three note away minor third with a small M, uh, whereas the, the major would be a four note away big M major third. The fourth is going to be a five note away perfect fifth. That's the same because it's a perfect as the major. The fifth is going to be a seven note away perfect fifth. This one was a perfect fourth, five note away, perfect four, seven note away, perfect fifth. The sixth is going to be an eight note away, minor six, whereas the major is a nine note away, major six. And the seventh is going to be a 10 note away, minor seven, whereas the major was an 11 note away, uh, major seven. So once I have those intervals, we'll compare the Dorian and Phrygian mode, the four and the five. Remembering in the minor key, you have the same option. If I go from the one to the four, I could think of that D as playing D minor, which means you're gonna play everything parallel, which will sound cool. That's kind of like the bluesy thing to do. But you can also think of yourself as being in Dorian, which means it, you're, 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 you're gonna have one interval that's different than the minor, which happens to be the 13, and the 13 is equivalent to the six. Okay, and then, and then, and then if we go to the Phrygian, so that's good. So those are the two ways that we can basically uh, think about it now. So we're on the nine here. So I'm on, I'm looking at the minor nine. So when I'm in the Aeolian, the ninth is equivalent to the second. And so we're going to have then th the funny thing is the, the minor has the same major second for the main minor. So, and then the question is, well, when does that ninth not apply? The ninth doesn't apply when we get to uh, the when we get to the Phryg the Phrygian. The Phrygian here has a flat nine, so the Phrygian is actually more minor than the main minor. The minor key is actually not exactly the opposite of the major because you would think that all the perfects would be the same, but all the majors would flip to minors. But that two note away major second doesn't flip. The Phrygian it does. So in the Phrygian, you would think that would be the opposite of the major. But no, we think of the, for whatever reason, and you can argue it, I was playing with it before, but for whatever reason, we use the Aeolian, which has all the same perfects, but it still has a major second. So that means what we're learning here on the ninth will be basically the same as what we learned on the majors, for the ninth, which is equivalent to the second because it's a major ninth, uh, which is, is the same as a major second for our purposes. 
The only time it will differ is when we get to the five, the fifth related to the minor scale, otherwise known as mode number three, the Phrygian mode, in which case you're going to have a, uh, a, a minor ninth or a flat nine, which is going to be a one note of away a flat second. So that means that as we go through and learn this ninth, it's equivalent to a two note away major second, which applies to the one, the four, or Aeolian and Dorian, but not to the five if you're playing in the same key because the Phrygian is the one that has that distinctive flat. And the, the major second also applies to all the majors, which is interesting, interestingly enough, because on the majors, you have a major second and the two things that are different uh, on on the major uh, do not include the nine, right? The the the, the mixolydian has a seventh that is going to be different, and then the uh, the uh, lydian has a fourth, uh, which is going to be different, which is equivalent to the eleven, right? That's right, I think. Okay, so let's go back on over. Now that we've gone through that, boggled our mind with that. So now we're gonna I'm gonna be on. A here, so let's go up top and just go through these and we'll say that I'm on, here's, let's just choose the middle of the guitar and say if I'm on that A, where are all of the ninths? All ninths that are related to it. There's only gonna be six of them, one per string, and we'll try to find those. So if I'm gonna say, all right, first there we have this one here because of, this is gonna be a, a, we can, the nine is equivalent to the second so I could call it a two note away uh, major second, right? It's right here to do. So two note away major second. So you can see that's two note away, which you could also call a two note away major ninth. All right, and so what can I do with that? Well, obviously I could arpeggiate. This fits into my arpeggiating. So I've got like a third here and I've got a fifth here. So I might say, I could do it this way, right? One, two, or nine, three, five. One, two, or nine, three, five. Or one, three, five, nine. One, three, five, nine. One, three, five, nine. Now again, that nine is not going up another octave, right? I could try to choose this nine where it would kind of have that incline or increasing, but I'm just, <laughs> I'm picking one, any one that I could that I could find, right? So, so that's how it is on the guitar a lot of times. So one, two, three, five, one, three, five, nine. All right. So then I've got a uh, a third back here. So then I could go uh, one, three, five. Let's go down to the next string down. So I'm going down below it. It's two notes away. So there's five. So there it is. There's there's five notes between these two strings. Five, four, three, two. So there we, we have it from here to here. Pinky to pointer. That makes sense. Is a two note away major second. Otherwise known as a two note away major ninth. Equivalent for our purposes at least. So we're going to say all right. And then that the inverse of that by the way would be nine which we'll have to do later will be 12 minus nine which would be a three note away bottom to top three note away minor uh third okay cool so what do i have with that i have a a fifth under here and i could try to bar this one off too because it's another a so i could be like let's try to do it one nine one one nine or eleven three if I get that one, that's fine because it's another A, and then I mute this one underneath it. All right, that's doable. And then, so I don't do that that often. I kind of do that. I have a, because the three, by the way, it's right here. So normally I would play like this. This would be, 
that's kind of interesting. I should work that in because here's the one, three, five. If I play this, and then I could just let go of the three and play. That's interesting because I've been thinking about it like this. I've got the one, because I like this shape on the A, because I've got the one, three, five, and then I've got, this is a flat fifth right there. That's the blues note. So I could go from here and then reveal the D, which is the 11, which is the 11. But the other option that I haven't been really doing is letting go of this and picking up these two. That's something I haven't really been doing. So I could go. whole box this whole box here is available and reachable so that's interesting to play with that more all right any case uh what else do we have uh this one we have a three down here so that's interesting too because normally i would reach back to that third but no now i'm reaching back to the nine and then I can pick up my third down here so I don't do that much and then I could still I could still bar off this two with that so I don't have to so I could try to bar that off and I get everything I need that's pretty cool I don't do that much Mute this string, cool. It's got potential. P for possibilities, man. I've got P for possibilities. I had to sing that, so I had to sing Possibility song. I didn't have to, probably into it as a kid, but it has now become one of the most embarrassing episodes of my childhood. Pick <laughs> uh, up the fifth there. Okay, let's go to the next string. I was an excellent singer when I was like f five or something. <laughs> this is gonna be, this is gonna be five, 10, 11, 12. Oh, and then it goes back to zero and then two. Okay, this is gonna be here and here it's a nine note away this is a two note away major second otherwise known as a nine note away major second nine otherwise known as a two note away major nine okay and then up that five so that's easy to do 
That's the Superman sound. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Is it like Superman 3 or something? I don't know. No one remembers Superman, dude. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's, it's Okay, what is... I have... A th I could borrow this off. So I could just... And that would pick up the 11, too. If I borrowed this. So I could go... Oh, that's interesting. Because that's going to be like... If I was on my normal A shape, it would look like this would be my bar chord E bar chord, like the E minor shape bar chord, and then I could just be like, I'm just going to reach way out there to the 9, but still bar it, dude. At the most, wait, that's not the 9? Is that right? At the most, uh, I can also get that 5 right there if I want to. That sounds cool, too. As I'm doing that, I could still pick up this five right there. Or reveal the D. I'm gonna start doing that. That's doable. That's not, that's no problem. I could do that. It's a reach, but I hold my guitar. Anyway, let's do the next one. So that's this one. All right, let's, let's move it down to the next string. So this would be 5, 10, 15, wait, 5, 10, 15, 14, and then 14 minus 12 is two. So that makes sense. So from here, to here. Okay, that's a two note away major second or two note away major nine inverse, therefore three note away minor third. So this is deceptively like you would think I could play like, like you'd think I could bar this, but no, it's easier to play it like this maybe. So now I'm playing, but if I do that, I'm playing the D, which is the, which is the 11 and the G, which is the seven, and then adding the nine. I want to get what I'd like to get, uh, but I can't see what I need is a third in there, obviously. That's not really, because that doesn't work. Let's get a third. So now I've got... That's nice. And I'm, okay, cool. I could bar this F and get the 13 if I want to. I'm currently muting it. I could bar it. Is there any way I can reach this fifth over here to complete the picture? So in other words, if I did my normal shape like this, is there any way I can get that B? Yeah, I think I can. It's pretty uh, awkward. It's easier to go from this shape to then this.
definitely has possibilities there. I don't do that much. This is, this is like, this is some good stuff, man. What else? What about this one? I can't grab that at the same time as this one. So I can go leaning forward and still grab that nine. I don't do that much. It's hard not to, it's hard to mute that string. I do something, I have a finger hanging out here. Can't do much with it. It's a useless finger. There's nothing to grab. Now nah, we'll leave it at that. All right, Mui B to the N. All right. Uh, let's go to the next one. Now I'm crossing the fault line, crossing the fault line, the San Andreas. So everything shifts up after here. So five, 10, 15, and then out. Let's bring it down from here. 15 minus 12 is, uh, uh, <laughs> five, 15 minus 12 is five minus two, which is three plus five up to here because of the fault line, which would be five, six, seven, eight, seven six five four three two so that makes sense now if th i couldn't reach that too easily oh my coffee is gonna get cold if it wasn't so that's there but there's not much i can do with that i'll leave it as is let's go to the next one which is the same distance here because it's two notes away it'll be five ten fifteen again fifteen minus twelve is three up here three plus five uh is five eight and then going down here would be eight plus uh, five, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and then 14. 14 minus 12 is two. <laughs> so it's ultimately two notes away. Okay, so if I was playing this full bar chord here, which would be like this, this is my normal A bar chord. Is there anything, any way I can work in that nine? So if I was like, if I was doing this, I'm like, but normally I'm barring off that A at the bottom, but then I'm like letting go of this and grabbing the nine. So now I let go of the, of the A and grab the nine. So that's doable, but kind of awkward. If I let go of both of them, I can grab the nine. So now I'm revealing the G, which is the seven. So I can go revealing the G seven. doable I think all right so that's good so let's go I'm gonna go to uh, the next one which is the D I'll do my joke do a joke break joke break this is where I lose everyone with my terrible jokes it's gonna be a somewhat political we're, we're in the heart of political season and I wrote all these horrible <laughs> political jokes and I have to use them because I only have two days be before the American election over here so, and I've got all this great material, you know? So I have to, I, so you gotta bear with me. I have to do it. There's no way around it. So here we go. I'm gonna get some coffee. Okay. All right, if you need to skip it, you could skip it. Forgive me here for my jokes. I'm gonna, 
I'm going to practice. They're going to get better because I practice it every day. All right. You know, you know, Kamala Harris is currently in the public eye too much. She's in the public eye too much. You know, in order for Americans to help the world see their way forward, we first need to get the plank out of our own eye. You know, we got to get the plank out of our own eye. So get Kamala Harris and Joe Biden out of the public eye for crying out loud before we go blind. For God's sake. It's crazy. You know, Kamala Harris... Kamala Harris is finally going on the record with some policy stances, which she's basically avoided like the plague forever. And it's crazy. But the, the pump, the public is now kindly asking if she could please allow them to see the record by, you know, by, by ceasing to sit on it. You know, we're glad we're glad you're finally going on the record about your about your radical, basically almost communistic type of policy ideas. But. But would you please get off the record now so we can actually look at it for crying out loud so we could like talk about it maybe? And she's like, not but not before I have Joe Biden's administrative press secretaries and whatnot add a few apostrophes, apostrophes here and there just to make sure that we've got the, the record straight. We don't want to miss we don't want to mislead people. That would be horrible because the transcript has to be altered post transcript and of anyways is, is it just me or or are the special interest groups making the kamala, kamala harris campaign ads retards honestly i know that's strong word for the to use these days but but it's technically correct so 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 for the sake of honesty i feel like i have to drop the euphemisms and and just run with the actual the way it is man Seriously, you're, you're not supposed to hire retards for your special interest group just because you renamed the condition to special needs, okay? That's not what you're supposed to do, I'm telling you. These, these deconstructivist euphemism creating manipulators are just, they're full of crap. Do you see the problems this causes? Do you see the problems that this causes, okay? Did, enough with the euphemisms, man. It is, name it what it is. Anyways. I, I understand that, that Trump is criticized for possibly considering advice from think tanks. But, but I feel like the Harris campaign should be criticized more for taking advice from think thimbles, for crying out loud. You know, I'd rather be able to choose ideas from a think tank of thought than, than like a little think thimble of thought. That's what they're getting their ideas from, a little basically communist think thimble that doesn't make any I mean, seriously, the think thimble people... The think thimble thinking people are so dumb. What one time there were two two of these think thimble thinking people that were walking down the street and one found a compact mirror, opened it saying, "Hey, this face looks familiar." And then the other think thimble thinker person grabs the mirror and says, "Yeah, well, of course it does. You're looking at me." Hey, let's stop wasting time looking at this mirror thing we found and go write some public policy. It's like, no, no, don't, don't write, don't write any more public policy. We don't need, this is not good. This is not who should, we need less of the public policy in general for crying out loud. Start hacking away the public policy. Get the hatchet, get the hatchet out. Where's that guy? Where's that guy in the, in the Latin country that's got the chainsaw to the pub? That's what we need chainsaw to the public to all this red tape get it out of here it's no good anyways you know i feel like i feel like the trump campaign with the help of elon musk is winning hearts and minds while the harris campaign is boring minds and inspiring hearts to attack their host for crying out loud it's it's it's, it's not good it's not good. in any case seriously if, if the country goes communist if this country goes communist i'm fleeing this place I'm going to flee this place. Good luck with all that itching you're going to have after I, after I flee the place. You know, all I have to do is, is have my, dung, my dog ru just run through the place and the place will be instantly fleed. That's what you get. That's what you get for going communist. All right. That's all I got. Those are my rants. I had to throw them all in there. Some excellent material. I think I could have refined it down a bit. 
but you know I'm running low on time you know you only got so much time all right so now we're gonna go to this one let's go above it first so I'm gonna go above it and so we've revealed a new string so that means we haven't seen the relationship above it yet and then the relationship below it will be the same from from the a string to this string to this string to this string will be the same it'll be the same from the a string to the next string down as this string to two strings down but then when we went to the a string to three strings down it will differ because that's where the fault line is all right keeping that in perspective we're going to say all right then above it uh now i have the inverse that i'm going to look for so the distance between these two i'm looking for a two note away uh major second or two note away major ninth same thing and the inverse therefore will be 12 minus 2 which is 9 9 note away minor third so if i go up i would call that negative 5 6 7 8 9 uh 10 so hold on a second that would be uh i'm looking for tw two 12 it's 10 notes away right it's going to be uh nine it's a it's a two note away i'm looking for a two note away major second which is the same as a two note away ninth so it's 12 minus two which would be 10. sorry about that i think i messed that up uh before as well when i was talking about the inverse dang it so let's go this should be negative five four three negative five six seven eight nine ten all right that makes sense i have to put a note on that hopefully i'm like worried about it. i messed up on my video but, but i'll talk about that later so we're gonna go this is gonna go from here to here top to bottom would be a uh a 10 note away uh uh minor seven bottom to top is a two note away uh major second okay so then is there anything else i can do with that well i have a five above it so i could arpeggiate it possibly so i've got this here so i've got i got uh the one five uh nine one five major nine one five major nine i've got a three down here on the third so i can almost read that on the d string yeah, that's doable so i've got i don't do that often but that's doable really so i've got this one so now this is I can play that as a chord. So. Interesting. Okay, I should do that more. All right, that's pretty much all I can do. Let's go now to the same string. I'm still frustrated that I've been calling it the inverse wrong name, but that's okay, get over it. It's a two note away, so now I'm gonna go on the same string we're looking for a two note away major second, which is a two note away major nine equivalent sane. So what can I do with that? Well, I can arpeggiate that. There's the three and there's the five. So I could say this is a one, two or nine, three, five, or one, three, five, two or nine, one, three, five, two or nine, one, three, five, two or nine. And then I have the same thing. This is the same relationship we saw before. I have a third back here. So there's our minor third. If I reach for it like this, I have my opportunity to grab here. So now I've got, now I've got the one, three, one, three, uh, nine, one, three, nine, one, three, major nine, one, three, major nine. Two note away major nine and I could grab the five. One three five nine. One three five nine. One three five nine. Alright, that's cool. Let's go to the next one down. I've got then this one. Now I'm going below. So now I'm going two notes away again. So down below would be five, four, three, two, pinky to pointer. Makes sense. Pinky to pointer is a two note away, four fret distance. So when I go from this string down to the next string, 
That's a two note away major second or two note away major nine. What can I do with that? Well, I have, just like before, I have now a fifth underneath it so I could bar that off. So I have that same kind of thing like we're here where I normally would play this as my uh, as my normal chord, which would be there's the third. So I'm playing the one, three, five, which I like because then I can, I can open this up to the flat fifth as compared to the D. And then I can open up the G. Right, so that's cool. Same thing, same pattern I like to do with the A on this position. But then I can also add this, letting go of the third. I can let go of the third and then grab this, which I don't do. I want to mute that or grab it. I can go D minor, add in the flat five, the G, and then letting go of the third, add in the nine. D minor, flat five. got a, uh, a third up here which is again pretty cool shape that I don't really play if I'm playing that D and then I'm like there's my E and then I've got a third which is on the six right there it's shifted up a bit because of the kink and the tuning so now this relationship Wait a sec, it's a little bit different. This is because this got shifted up. So let's see. A little bit harder to play because this is a little bit harder. And then, so then I have another A down here. That would be doable. All right, let's move on though. So now let's go to this one. So that's gonna be, I'm looking for a two note away major second or two note away major nine. So five, 10, 11, 12, 12 minus 12 brings it back to zero, one, two. So that makes sense on the nine. So same relative shape that we saw before. <laughs> So here to here is a two note away major second or a two note away major nine. And the inverse is 12 minus two or 10. Minors 10 note away, minor seven. All right, get that straight. Idiot, you messed everyone up. Okay. It's an honest mistake, because it was like nine. Whatever, dude. I'm not listening to you anymore. So there's the one, five, nine. And then I can grab the three over here. So this is another one where it's like, if I grab this normal shape for the D bar shape, it would look like this, right? Well, my finger just cramped up. And then from that shape, I could grab up here. And if 
I grab up there, I could still grab that five. <laughs> So I could go. Picking up the pinky, revealing the seven. Grabbing the five. And the nine. very nice. I should work that in more. That's lovely. Just lovely. Alright. It's lovely. What's wrong with lovely? That's... I don't say lovely. Well, you should say lovely. It's a good word. Um... Oh. Uh, I can't reach that. Come on. Impossible. Oh, okay, let's go to the next one. So if I go down here, this again, if I look at my normal D shape, it would look like this. And normally I have this right there, and then I could just drop it back. So then I would I would let go of the third. So if I was doing this, and I let go of the third, I lose the third. That's another way to get the nine here, which is a lot easier probably, versus doing this. But you get a different sound with that. That's kind of a cool sound. Versus it sounds different to me than this. That versus what it say? Should be pretty much the same, but it sounds. to me. The problem is how can I get a, you can't still get a third in there because I lose the third and there's not an easy way to grab another third. So I could go like this, boom, changing this all up and going like this. So I go back this way and then I grab the nine Ooh. Lovely. <laughs> it's lovely. That's just lovely. There's no other word to describe it. I could go here and add... Uh, but then, so that's kind of, wait a sec, is that right? Yeah. So that's interesting because then I can go back and forth from this third. I should play with that more. Uh, all right. 
What else do we got? Let's go down to the last one here. I have this one. That's quite the reach. It's a little bit less reachy because it's across. No, it's not. Yeah, it, no, it's not. Well, so not much I can do with that. Can I do another one or am I about done? I think I'm almost done here. Let me, I think I need to edit a little bit to mess because I messed up the wording of that last one. I was gonna like mess around like in the key. Let's just, I was, let me just noodle around. Cause I was thinking like if I wanted to go, go from mode to mode. So now I'm in, if I start in Aeolian and I'm like jamming. I could go to the Dorian, of course. Now, when I go to the Dorian, I have a different position on the nine, which means that I was looking at before, which means it's the same shape. Reach up here instead of when I was on the A, I reach here. So that's cool. But I was thinking, like, what about if I go to the majors, like, I look at the related mixolydian, which is on the G. So the G usually sounds like bluesy to me because I end up doing this thing, right? I end up doing this whole shuffle thing. See how it has the three pillars here? Like, so you do like the shuffle thing. And if you could reach that seven. Minor seven. And then, and then I can also, with my normal G, I have this. But then I can add uh, the seven, which is the F right there. So I can pull this pinky up to here. You get that bluesy seven. So I don't usually play that like I would. I want to play like it's in the minor key, like I'm in minor. A. And then kind of throw in this shuffle that usually makes me sound very strongly within the blues with that shuffle. makes me sound like I'm in a major blues, but then go back to the minor because it's the related minor. A minor shuffle pattern. To the G mixolydian shuffle pattern, related mode. Back to the A minor shuffle pattern. G, G7. Seven. A minor. G makes a little. A minor. G makes a little. A minor. So if I wanted to then feel like I'm going from A minor to G mixolydian, that should be a natural move. I just hang out in G mix. So if I'm in A minor. Then I go to the G.
going back to the A minor. I could do the same with the C. I don't. I go to the minors more, so Locrian's a or Locrian's a mess to try to stay in. Phrygian's a little difficult for me. If I just go from A minor to C, so now I'm in. So I'm gonna do the same shuffle pattern, but now I'm in the related C, which has. If I think about myself in C major, I can think here's the 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 the, the three pillars are still here, right? That's the same three pillar shape, and the G, but I think I was thinking about it as G. So now I'm thinking about like this is the bottom part of the three pillars in the key of C. So then I still have the shuffle pattern that I can do in here or here that I could do in the key of C and try to go back and forth between A minor. I can't do the I can't really do the seven because the major doesn't have this the major seven it has the I mean, it doesn't have the dominant seven it has a major seven so it doesn't have that same like when I was on the G I had that F which is the minor seven solidian and if I'm on the major if I want to stay in the same key I don't have I have the uh, a major seven. C major. should be in the same key. What if I went from a minor to the mixolydian and then minor to the major? So I'm going to go minor and then I'm going to go up to the G mixolydian shuffle pattern, which is 
back to the minor to the C shuffle pattern, C major shuffle pattern, back to the minor. So they're all, all of these modes should be in the same key, they're the same notes, so, but they sound distinctively like different types of music to me with a minor shuffle and a major shuffle, uh, but they should be in the same key, so I was like, so here's the minor. Mixolydian G. Minor shuffle. C major. Mixolydian. Minor shuffle. Mixolydian shuffle. Minor shuffle. C major shuffle. G minor G shuffle. Mixolydian. Minor shuffle. minor in there. This would be an E Phrygian shuffle. 